On CSX's XSEL trackage in Central Florida, this red over yellow over red signal indication is known as a medium approach. Proceed at medium speed, prepare to stop at the next signal ahead. This indicates a northbound train is approaching and will enter the siding for a second train to pass. This is South End Haines City and the beginning of our rail fanning on this portion of the Carter sub for the next couple of days. Staying with family near the tracks, we'd make the seven minute drive out this Sunday morning to Haines City as we heard over the radio that two trains were to meet in the siding just north of town. First up would be the northbound, a local, L772, today with a sizable train for Martin Marietta north of Davenport. The JA dispatcher would be putting 772 into the siding at Haines City to wait on a southbound Amtrak, train 91, the Silver Star. Setting up under the signal bridge about a quarter mile from where we were, we can see a high green lip for the main as 772's entire train is now in the siding and south end switch lined back for the main. While today not served by any passenger service, Haines City still sees four daily Amtraks along with a handful of freight trains, including unit coal for Orlando and nightly local L765. While the small town hasn't seen passenger service since the days before Amtrak, the city has done a beautiful job restoring the old Spanish-style ACL depot in downtown, but alas, not for trains. Back in the day, the architecture of stations like Orlando, Sebring, Avon Park, and Haines City would say welcome to Florida to arriving passengers off the silver service. At milepost A829.2 is South End Haines City, where the long-forgotten ACL Lake Harbor branch breaks out of the main, turning south to Clewiston via Lake Wales and Frostproof. While the northernmost section ends only a few miles south of here and is rarely used, the Clewiston trackage is still in operation as part of the South Florida Rail Corridor used by the U.S. Sugar Railroad. With 91 pass, 772 would get his signal out of the siding to continue to Davenport, so that's where we'd go next. Between Davenport and Lofman is Martin Marietta's Lofman Distribution Center, where L-772 would have orders to drop his entire train and pick up a string of empties to take back to Winston. One curiosity of this industry is their old switcher, a GE B30-7 fitted with remote control capabilities for one-man crew switching operations. I believe it's the only B30-7 that's still operational daily in the state. 772 would have to stop to throw the mainline switch to enter the plant and its unique loop track similar to Semex's track layout in Brooksville and the Big Bend power plant on Tampa Bay. Today's train would be made up of 49 loaded rock hoppers that will be unloaded in the near future and shipped out of the plant via dump trucks. In a few minutes, 772 would lug his train around the corner off the A-line and into Martin Marietta trackage. The conductor would then dismount from the lead locomotive and throw the switch for forward movement into the loop track. Entering and departing the plant usually takes longer than expected due to the amount of switches and derails that the conductor must switch prior to a movement. Two big six axle locomotives would be the assigned power today, which isn't uncommon for the day 772 comes all the way up here. What is semi uncommon is the EMD SD70 Mace in the second position currently. 
We keep a close eye on this train for the next couple of hours as we knew the SD-70 would end up leading the train back south to Winston. With all other tracks filled up with cars, 772 would have a lengthy switching operation ahead of him, so we'd leave him there and set up a couple miles south of the plant as the dispatcher had lined through two Amtraks that were to meet around the Kissimmee Amtrak station. First up would be the northbound Silver Meteor, train 98, running track speed and right on time. High Green, South End, Davenport. The better part of half an hour would pass as another Amtrak would be lined through, this one being train 97, which would be followed closely by 772, who was just now completing their switching in Martin Marietta. Just 50 yards from the north end of the siding is Horse Creek and a small bridge that carries the A-line over the water. Identical to the markings that used to mark all bridges all over this portion of Florida, the small Horse Creek Bridge still proudly displays its parent railroad from over 60 years ago. Here in 2023, the bridge hasn't been repainted or badly vandalized, which is impressive when you think about it, as the ACL hasn't been an actual railroad prior to the 1967 merger with the seaboard. This same little bridge has hosted the days of steam engines, F7s, U-boats, and presently, Amtrak 97, the Silver Meteor, heading south on home rails. Track field 97, clear all the way through Davenport, over. Clear through Davenport, 97 out. Finally, after entering the spur over an hour prior, L-772 would get his signals to depart southbound right on 97's markers. With confirmation that all switches and derails were reset to normal, the JA dispatcher would upgrade the signals to high greens for L-772 as 97 continued to clear blocks ahead of him. Later in the afternoon, we'd venture out to the A-line again as we heard Amtrak 92 approaching from the south on its way to Kissimmee out from his Lakeland station stop. A clear indication at the south end of Haines City would be lit when we arrived, and in a few minutes, 92 would be rounding the almost 90-degree curve that swings the A-line north towards Orlando. With the exception of coal trains, you can expect all four Amtraks, L-772, L-765, and M-457 to pass every day. Leaving Waycross around mid-morning, Orlando's daily freight ties down overnight in Baldwin and will get a pre-dawn crew that will take the train down the S-Line and right back north to Taft on the A-Line. Lately, that crew has been called around 5.30 a.m., making it a mid-morning usual on the Carter sub. At 10.34 a.m. this Tuesday morning, 457 is already lined through and rolls by just a few minutes later. Clear all the way through Davenport, northbound on the main. M457, 17, left quarter, C16, 28 out.
With freight for Taft and Sanford, this guy has everything in the book, from scrap guns, boxcars, tanks, and auto racks for the ramp right next to Taft Yard. I like Kane City and Davenport, as not only do they pose good photo spots and a handful of trains each day, but also for the history and the relics that have not been removed or lost. In the middle of Haines City siding are these curious cement blocks that at one time were signal bases for old ACL cantilevers similar to the five that survived in Lakeland until just a few years ago. Rail fans of the area still haven't figured out if these signals used to guard the north end of the siding here at one point or maybe govern yard tracks that broke out at the station. In any case, it's good to see them still here, standing their ground after over seven decades. About seven miles south of Haines City is Lake Alfred, an orange juice town at birth. Lake Alfred capitalized on the same business that grew Auburndale, Davenport, and Winter Haven, orange juice. Built around its namesake lake, Lake Alfred has yet to be gentrified, accessed by a county highway and the A-line. Fifty years ago, Lake Alfred had a few orange juice plants, textile factories, freight depot, and a station for the growing population of farmers that tended to the hundreds of acres of orange groves. Now Lake Alfred is home to a corn syrup industry, a water tower, and an ABS signal that old railroaders still call Lake Alfred, like the crew of this morning's M457 rolling north to Taft. Another four miles south on the A line is Auburndale. With a population of 17,000 residents, Auburndale is a flag stop name on the timetable where two subdivisions merge at a diamond and a couple of mainline connections. The old SAL station has been renovated here and sits comfortably right next to the tracks in the quiet downtown. Milepost A840.2 is south in Auburndale, which is showing some good news with a clear indication for a northbound just after 9 a.m. Calling signals through town would be our old friend L772 with two six axle motors again, but this time with a lot less train. Later in the day, we'd be running errands and would catch one last train at Lofman Holdout. Lofman, like Zephyr Hills, is a dispatcher-controlled signal that protects no interlockings, switches, or yards, but instead governs the trains approaching the CFRC at Point Siena or the first siding on the Carter Sub at Davenport. The odd signal has an odd layout, flanking Ronald Reagan Parkway the way it was when original us &S style ACL signals were once here. Along with the signals come signal boxes and a relay box with the largest antenna I've ever seen on the CSX. At 1845, our final train of the trip would come as the northbound Silver Star train 92 would speed past doing every bit of track speed. Lothman Holdout on the Carter Sub. This is Christian from Multicolor Films, 
end of transmission.